Nikki looks so short. Oh, it's so <laughs> it's delayed. Okay, Holly Rowe, you have the first question. Go for it. Hey, Coach, I have a couple of questions if you don't mind. First and foremost, you know, you're one of the coaches that is also a mother. I was just wondering how you're managing your children with this unique working environment. And then my second question is, how are you navigating between what your ownership group is doing and what your players are wanting and, and you're the coach trying to navigate both of those spaces? Yeah, first question. Um, I think when I got into the WNBA, I knew it was a unique challenge um, as a mom. Um, you know, the advantage of the WNBA is that there really is an off season. So I can be super present uh, in the off season. Obviously, we were all present at home during quarantine, but you know, it's hard to be away. Uh, my son had a lacrosse tournament this weekend and you know, we, we decided as a family, they weren't going to come in. I think my kids, because they're 15, 15 and 12 would have lost their minds in here, not being able to play lacrosse and, and be with their friends and kind of have the last of their summer. So it's a lot of face time, but we're, we're kind of used to it. I mean, I've been in this league now. Um, this is my fifth year. Uh, so my, my kids are used to mom being gone at times and, and kind of only seeing me a lot at home games and, and a little bit here and a little bit there on day offs. So um, not really a new challenge for us, uh, just a little bit more FaceTime maybe than, than in the past. And, and just that feeling of this is a long time, you know, between when we see that, when we see each other, um, when it comes to, you know, the complicated aspects of, you know, where Kelly, Leffler stands on Black Lives Matter versus what our players, I mean, it's it's not easy. And I, I've been honest with the players about how um, I feel um, specifically to them and how I, I wish I could be uh, at times more supportive, um, but they know, um, they understand how I feel that I, I'm gonna both lead and serve them and, and quite frankly, walk side by side with them. So. You know, it's been difficult because um, I can only say certain things. I, I have to toe the line of what's kind of politically correct. And but I was I was really proud of their statement because I felt like it was truly taking the high road, um, really explaining themselves without um, it turning negative. And so it was easy, I think, to um, really tr show true support to them because of that, because they really took the approach of they wanted people to understand that it was a movement. It wasn't a political statement. Um, they want people to know that, you know, all lives can't matter if black lives don't. And so, you know, they're just, they're asking for, you know, simple things. And, and I think equality, it sounds like it's a simple thing and, and through history, we know it isn't. And so what can we do? What small part can I play um, in, in making that more of a reality in today's world? Wonderful. Thank you. Of course. Uh, Doug Feinberg, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, Two-part question. Just to piggyback on Holly's for a second here. As a mom, I mean, you're in the most, or supposedly one of the most secure places right now for avoiding COVID. Did you have reservations about your kids playing sports right now? I mean, I don't know where they are. I'm guessing it's not as secure as the bubble is as far as other people having it or whatever so that's the first part the second one you just talked about the signing of erica today i mean i don't know if she'll be there i'm guessing at least seven days based on quarantine rules but just talk about that signing as well yeah of course um yeah i don't you know i'm i'm um uh, i probably fall in the category of let's be really careful um but you know i i like the fact that my kids are back out there active um you know, but I'll, I'll just give an example of something that happened with my son's team. They played three games yesterday. Um, they were set to play in the semifinals of their tournament today. And we got an email late last night um, that one of the boys on the team uh, was registering a temperature over 100. And so they pulled their team out of the tournament. So they didn't play today uh, for precautionary reasons. And we know right now the toughest part, in my opinion, about what's going on in our country right now is that, you know, whether you're pro-Trump or not Trump or pro-mask or whatever you are, it doesn't really matter. The, the reality is the numbers are skyrocketing. Maybe the percentage of deaths are going down, um, but you know, it's, it, 
we have to think about, you know, what, what's important. And in that scenario, you know, we, we have to be considerate of, you know, what it means. And so I think everybody on that team felt like it was important uh, to not play today, just in case um, this, this kid, high school kid has, has COVID and, and has been playing, um, you know, and with testing right now, I mean, we're, we're lucky that we're in a situation where we're turning tests around in 24 hours because, you know, with the, the mass amount of testing going on, it seems like our biggest issue in this country is getting results in a timely manner. And so, you know, it would be different if you could find out right away whether somebody had it or not, then they'd be able to keep playing. Um, but, I, but in this situation, I think the uncertainty, they, they, they took the safe route and were smart about it. So, you know, I appreciate that the coaches understand, you know, truly what's important. Um, when it comes to Erica McCall, I mean, who knew when we were going into this that, you know, we'd be down to nine players um, a week in. And so, you know, Erica is somebody we've had on our board, um, whether it was because of an injury or something else. She's just someone that, you know, we feel like can continue to keep pace. And so for us, you know, right now, um, it's all about how fast can we play and really increasing our pace of play. She's a player that plays with a ton of energy. She's a player that will come in and, you know, give us whatever we ask, whether it's to be a practice player, whether it's to play five minutes, whether it's to play 20 minutes. I know Erica McCall has incredible character and, and will play her butt off, you know, regardless of the situation. And so, you know, she was an obvious pickup for us, um, but just like any player in this environment, you know, we uh, we knew we were going to be at nine on Friday. I called her Friday night um, about midnight here, but it was nine o'clock on the West Coast and said, can you get on a plane tomorrow? So, you know, we basically were able to quickly turn around a flight and at least get her quarantine process started. So she arrived late last night, you know, and started testing. And, you know, once she makes it through med medical protocol and has her cardiac testing, her physical and and her quarantine, she'll be able to get out on the court. And, you know, we don't know if that's, you know, we don't know how quickly our other players will get back. Um, and so at that point, you know, we, if we have to add a player back, then we've got to figure out, you know, how to, how to move forward from there. But, you know, it was an easy move for us because of, you know, she's a high character, high energy, um, you know, someone that's just going to really, really play fast and hard. Um, Michelle, go ahead. Um, Coach, what does somebody like Shakina Strickland bring to your to your team? Uh, obviously, a veteran um, who's had a lot of experience. But how do you see her fitting in both offensively and defensively? You know, Strick is just a um, <laughs> it's the best way. She's just a calming presence. She knows how to play the game. She's not incredibly vocal, but she's also not quiet. Um, but she knows how to be a pro. Um, she's teaching people around her how to be a pro just because she understands how to move. She understands spacing. She understands where she can get shots. She understands what she's good at um, and maybe what she's not as good at. She knows she's a better spacer than someone in ball screen action. So she doesn't try to do things that, um, you know, aren't in her, her wheelhouse. And that's a big lesson for young players. Like show me what you can do, not what you can't do. You know, and a lot of times, young players try to do way too much and, and, and really get away from the strength of their skill set. So, um, and, and on top of that, she's just a, there's probably no player I've ever coached and that has been more against team drama <laughs> than Strickland. I mean, she just is someone that, you know, avoids it, um, you know, but is a great teammate and, and really just is, makes everybody around her better. So, it's been great having her here. Other than the fact that we also know, I mean, her teammates know right away that when she's open, you get her the ball. Um, and, and, you know, quite frankly, everyone's surprised when the ball doesn't go through the basket. And so, you know, we've done a lot of shooting drills this year and we've, we've got a lot of metrics on some of our shooting drills. And just as a team, it's kind of amazing with the changes that we've made. You know, we the shooting drills we do where we were trying to get 100 and we'd barely break 100 and now, you know, we went 165 and, and 180 in two separate shooting drills when 100 was our goal last year. So, you know, it's, it's just fun as a coach to see the ball go through the basket. Okay, Darren Paul, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I've got two questions, really. First off, what does success look like for you in the dream 
in 2020. And uh, what can you take out of this as a coach in terms of your personal and professional development in this very unique circumstance? Well, I think that's it. You know, I mean, I think uh, I'm going to start with the second question because obviously with, with what's going on in the world right now and, and even what's going on with my team and what's going on, you know, with my franchise and ownership and everything else that I got to control what I can control and I have to let go of other things. And, you know, as a staff, we were talking today even about how, you know, I'm very scout driven. Um, I, I want to take away our opponents, um, you know, strengths. And, and it's not like we'll stop doing that. But I think it's a year where we, we have to get uncomfortable and, and be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, and maybe it means, you know, taking the approach that it's about, you know, us continuing to get better at what we do rather than always being consumed with what we're going to take away from our opponents. And so, you know, I'm going to have to balance that because I told my my assistants today, I said, you know, it's easy for me to sit here and say right now that I understand what you're saying, that we're going to have to be better at, you know, continuing to develop our own team rather than worrying about everybody else. I said, but you're going to have to remind me before we play L.A. and you're going to have to remind me of that before we play Seattle because, you know, my natural instinct is to prepare, prepare, prepare. You know, what are we going to do with Stewie? What are we going to do with Candace? You know, and, and certainly we will do that, but there are times with the way the season's laid out where you're going to play 10 games in 19 days, you know, that, that you have to keep figuring out a way with a young team um, to just get a little better every game. And, and, you know, we say it all the time. It's so cliche-ish, but it's true that you have to trust the process, you know, and, with Renee opting out and, and really knowing right away that Kennedy is going to be someone that we've got to rely on. You know, she's, she does a lot of incredible things, um, but she's going to make a lot of mistakes as a rookie. And so we're going to have to learn to, to live with her mistakes and teach her to place through them and things like that. So I think there's going to be a lot of things that are a little different for us. And then what does success look like for us? I mean, you know, we're not, we're not talking about number of wins, obviously Vegas, the odds in Vegas don't think we're very good, um, but I think we're a little better than those odds. Certainly, you know, we need some pieces back um, on this roster to, you know, probably realize our full potential. Um, but I like our pieces. I like our ability to score the basketball. And so, you know, do we expect to make the playoffs? I mean, we certainly want to compete for the playoffs, um, you know, but it, for us, it's going to be one game at a time, trying to be better at the end of the season than we are at the beginning. Um, you know, and kind of build towards 2021, if nothing else. All right, now that that buzzer's done, uh, Nikki, thank you. Yes. Everybody else, we have uh, Shakina Strickland and Brittany Brewer coming in. All righty. Um, if you have a question for our players, please go ahead and raise your hand again. Brittany, you fit in there a little bit better than uh, Nikki. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Darren Paul, we'll go back to you. Uh, hello, Brittany and Shakina. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, question for Shakina. Um, Obviously, you made the finals last year. Um, how does that, what experience from that are you going to bring to your team for this season? Um, I think, I mean, it was fun making championship last year, but I think definitely being on a new team is more, uh, it's about chemistry. Uh, that's something we had big last year at Connecticut, and that's something I'm trying to bring to this team. And so far, everyone is getting, getting along very well. Like, chemistry is amazing. They're really just starting to learn each other. Uh, we get along very well. We talk and communicate very well on the court. So that's a big step right there. Uh, may I ask a second? I'm going to go for it. Uh, Brittany, what are you looking to, sorry, what are you looking to learn uh, from a player like uh, Shakina, who's got such experience? Yeah, um, I mean, she has great experience and I'm literally looking to learn anything she offers me. Um, I mean, from rest, how that looks, rest and recovery, confidence on the court, pace, anything like that. And she's already helped out a lot. Um, we've got some great vets. And so I'm very grateful. I'm like a sponge soaking it all up. Thank you. Um, Bria, go ahead. 
uh, this question, Kenna, I wanted to ask you about like why you decided to sign with Atlanta and like what kind of went into that decision. And uh, Brittany, I know it's been a chaotic year for everyone, but just kind of talk. I wanted to get your thoughts on like your rookie season thus far. Um, free agent. Um, I mean, it went pretty well. I mean, uh, me and Nikki had been talking since the day one. They could start talking free agency. Uh, I mean, you know, and I mean. I loved it in Connecticut, um, but I mean, I know Nikki um, was similar. Her stuff is similar to Connecticut and everything, but I mean, the decision is really um, also being close to home. Uh, I mean, I'm going into my ninth season, and so uh, just being close to home, really. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably miss it. I miss CT, but I'm happy to be here in Atlanta for sure. Yeah, and then uh, rookie season, I don't know anything else, uh, you know, so. I mean, it's all been good, and um, again, like, the vets have just been helping me out so much, and they make it seem like a normal year, you know, even though we all know it's not, um, and so I'm really, really grateful for them. Thank you. Um, hey, Holly, go ahead. Think, okay, great, thanks. Hi, Holly Rowe from ESPN. I have one question for each of you, if you don't mind. Shakina? Um, first and foremost, just curious how you spent your pandemic and kind of what, what you were doing to try to stay ready to play, even though you weren't sure if you were going to play. And then for Brittany, I just wanted to ask, um, you know, you guys took such a huge step forward at Texas Tech this year. I wanted to ask, like, what your confidence level is like and how you feel like you can take an even bigger step forward at the WNBA level. Uh, for me, during the time, I uh, definitely worked with a guy from back home, his name is Patrick. Uh, did some stuff with him, and and just mostly been outside a lot, getting to spend time with my nieces and my nephew. Uh, and I got to spend time with them, so we stayed outside playing a lot, uh, which that helped out a lot. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. And then at Texas Tech, we did have a um, my best year yet there, and so I really am just looking to use it as a springboard um, for here, and um, just continue to learn and learn and grow. And um, I know I have so much room to grow, and um, Lots of teammates helped me, and um, so I'm really soaking it all in this training camp for sure. Thank you, ladies. Um, I know we have a lot of questions here and a limited amount of time. We'll try to get through them. Um, Lindsay Gibbs, go ahead. Yeah, this is for Shakina. A lot of, obviously, players have had to balance their health concerns and you know, the, the fight for social justice and in deciding whether or not to play this season. For you, what went into that decision? And was there anything in particular from the league or from your team that made you feel comfortable opting in? Um, I did. I mean, it came close to probably opting out, uh, but I definitely felt like, I mean, coming to a new team, I didn't want to let the team down. Um, and my family, uh, supports me back there, and they was they was happy that I decided to play and come into the bubble. Um, Bria, go ahead. So I wanted to ask uh, for anybody who uh, is willing to answer kind of like the the experience with um the trainings before when you were in atlanta and now kind of um i mean both new teams for both of you uh but kind of like what are you kind of excited about for people to see in terms of the game and of of your teammates as well as anything that's different uh with yourselves <laughs> um i mean the training we had for the week in atlanta uh individual work and a lot of shots up uh, a lot of conditioning in and and just coming here i know a lot of people probably uh has us in the bottom uh because we're missing our main two people uh renee and tiff but i think we'll be surprised when they see this team like the chemistry is already there and and how hard everyone works um and that how quick this team is uh i think they're gonna see how quick the team really get up and down the court and i think they'll really be surprised we got great shooters uh all around players so i think this is gonna be a fun team and uh Fun team for people to watch, also. And Devonte Hughes, you've got the last question. Um, hi, Devonte Hughes from Georgia Sports mm -hmm. Hospitality Media. My question is for Brittany. Yes. 
Um, from Texas Tech and to here, what are the differences in the practice? Um, well, at Tech, I was like the leader being the senior and then coming here, um, I'm the rookie. And um, so my roles have changed and obviously like vocality is the same and um, basically all like the playing stuff is the same, but really, I mean, I'm just learning versus directing like I was at Tech. And so um, just lots and lots of listening and learning and adapting really, really quick um, and adjusting as quick as possible as well. That's kind of the big difference is I got kind of in the rhythm my second year with that staff at Tech and then coming here, I had to learn quickly. All right, and that's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.